Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 65 of Teaching Tales, the podcast totally devoted to sharing stories from the world of education. I am Brent Coley, your host and elementary principal in beautiful Southern California. And joining me today, a friend, a fellow IAQ board member, Crystal Chavez. Crystal, how are you doing? Hi, Brent. I'm doing great. Fantastic. Well, I am excited. We've kind of been voxing back and forth to try to set something up. And I'm excited about what we're going to chat about today um, because I think anybody listening, it, it's rel- it relates to everybody. <laughs> Even if you're not in education, every single person uh, who's listening to this could relate to what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into that, for anyone who's not familiar with Crystal Chavez, who is Crystal Chavez? Um, I'm a mom, first and foremost. I have two bouncing boys you might hear soon come bouncing in. Um, But I'm a teacher. Let's see, I'm going into my 13th year. I have worked half of my career in a brick and mortar. And since having my first son, I've actually been an online teacher, um, teaching kids who are homeschooled, essentially. Uh, And I am a big SEL, social emotional learning advocate. I actually have now gotten my uh, yoga certification for K through 12 students. Um, so that's been fun. Uh, and I just, um, I'm just really passionate about overall wellness. And no matter who you are, no matter what your job or what your title is, every single person can benefit from something like that, from for that social emotional learning, that, that wellness. To start, do you have a story? Because again, the whole podcast is about story um i know before we get there i know there was a twitter chat was it about a week ago that yeah that that that, that's kind of what sparked you and i setting this up was was a a prompt had come up about like what do you do to manage to balance (laughs) that work personal life like any any story or anything that you you're passionate about it so so share me tell me a story or, or share what you're passionate about in terms of this topic? Um, <clears throat> honestly, I think what you know got me started was um, an age that I was really experiencing some hardships when I first started my teaching career. Um, I was in my 20s and you know started my career and I was in some some rough spots with the people I was engaging with outside of um, <laughs> outside of my workplace. Mm-hmm. And so things were tough. And I was working at a school where we were right on the edge of innovation. It was amazing, an amazing experience. Uh, and I needed a lot of emotional support during that time. We were working hard. Um, outside situations were not favorable. And I struggled and I started to struggle more and more more enough so that my um, administrators started noticing. Uh, and that's where, you know, you, you don't want that, those troubles to come leaking into your career, right? Everybody's, that whole idea of like, leave everything at the door, you know, and, and it's so hard. And yeah. that's, yeah. I think what I realized is that working through that, if I would have left it at the door, I wouldn't have had anyone to support me. Mm-hmm. And the people that I was spending the most time with there at school, if, you know, once I got vulnerable enough, really, they were able to support me in a professional way to help me manage, um, you know, to get through what I needed to get through. Luckily, I did. Uh, it took a good couple of years uh, for me to learn the lessons that I needed to learn learn but i knew that going into the school it was a safe place for me i could share i had people that were supporting me and allowing me to um you know take some time when i needed to uh to talk you know as my principal open door just come in when you when you need support there was even a time i remember where i got a text right that's like you know don't check your text sometimes it's the best policy policy to have because there was some you know fake emergency happening but it got me riled up and i could not i you know i was probably mid anxiety attack really in class and so my principal walked by the door and i told her i need you right now to teach in my class i i need you to do this um so she she did she came in i just took a breather 
um, <clears throat> and was able to kind of, it was right before recess. So she just took over for about 10 minutes, took him to recess, came right into her office, sat down with me, talked, and we were really able to um, just have that moment that I needed and that continued support. So that things like that don't happen often. We don't have the cultures in enough schools um, to allow for, for those, those moments. And that's kind of what I'm striving for is like, Hey, when you're there, you're there. Right. I mean, I was actually reading your book <laughs> and you're talking about the kid that pushes your buttons, you know, your apology chapter. And, you know, sometimes you're at the point where like, you just need someone to step in and recognizing that and having the, that availability just for five minutes, right. Just to diffuse something within you or within the classroom. Um, I think that's really, really important culture to build. Absolutely. And as you were saying that, you use the phrase, check it at the door. Yeah. Do we ask our kids to do that? Oh, yeah. It's like, should we? I mean, ki our kids, I mean, you mentioned the word like trauma-informed practices and things like mm -hmm. that, that some of our kids... And it's more and more the number of those kids who are walking through our classroom doors, whether it's an online school or brick and mortar school, the number of kids that are coming into our schools that have been affected by trauma, it, it, it's, gosh, it's, it's just, I am seeing it as a site principal. It is, in, it's, it's alarming, really. Yeah. But we have to be prepared for that. But gosh, it just resonated. You're right. We're, we, we too often think, well, check it at the door. You can't let anything show and yes there's got to be a balance there you don't want to come in and <laughs> bring everything in and upset but at the same time you hit it on a great point if you don't show any vulnerability or or you don't mention anything then you you lose out on a support system that is there around you the whole time i mean i've been fortunate to teach in schools where i've had some it sounds like what you had at that school where i didn't just consider them colleagues they were my friends like oh, I, yeah. still, I still go to christmas parties with the people that i taught with 20 years ago we still do an annual christmas party and they were the types of people and still are that if i was struggling with something after school i could go next door and talk to my buddy and be like hey man I have a hard time with this and and i know that he would be there for me so yeah. i think this is a great point that Again, finding that balance between you don't want to bring it, you gotta, you can't bring too much in because yeah. you don't want to upset the 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 environment here. But at the same time, we are human, and recognizing that we're human and to tap into that support system that that is there is so important. Because again, I come back: do we tell our kids when they walk through the door, "All right, check it"? No, or or we shouldn't <laughs> because yeah. those kids are bringing so much some of them are just bringing in so many emotional uh, pieces of baggage. And like you said, we want it to be a safe place for them. Yeah. What you said reminded me. Um, so like, first of all, when we do, we don't necessarily, we might not necessarily say it to the kids, right? We might not say, check it. We don't want to hear it. But if we're not creating the space for them to feel that freedom to tell you, Hey, I had a rough day or a rough night, um, or maybe they didn't sleep well, or they're not feeling well, uh, then they're probably not going to, right? Um, mm -hmm. If we're not valuing when they share those things, and we're not being vulnerable ourselves, then the, the environment isn't creating that safety. Um, but you also mentioned, you know, colleagues where you go next door, and you know who you can, you know, what door you can knock on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we used to do a funny thing. It just kind of happened organically where when we were stressed, stressed out, we would stretch. So if we saw another colleague stretching kind of um, in a funny way, like, oh, I'm really stressed and like doing a big lunge or something like that, we knew that it was something that um, that we were like, it was an alert. Yeah. So, yeah. so I really like having that in the classroom as well, right? Like let them give you some kind of alert that like, I am not okay right now. So um, I always had a bean bag. Like I love that flexible seating is like getting huge now because I was always trying to create those types of environments, but I had a little uh, two bean bag area where 
the kids knew that if they needed to chill out, they could go there. So now, you know, I, I've developed a peace corner or a calming corner here at my house for my kids in the same kind of fashion where it was like, Hey, I need some alone time. I'm going to go over here. And there's lots of tools that I use, um, for them there. Imagine if we had a, a calm corner for teachers. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> as you were saying that, like a, sim a symbol, how many teachers, especially at the elementary level, I mean, we're doing this on video now, but on the audio, you you, just, you cross your fingers for like the bathroom sign. We yeah. have teacher, we have sing we have signals for may I use the bathroom. What a great what, what a great idea to have a signal like hey I need a break. And I know that some teachers do stuff like this, but what a great reminder for anyone who isn't doing something like this as we're recording this over the summer, as the next year starts, what a great thing. Come up with a signal that if your kiddos, because I mean, gosh, we've got kids who, I had a rough night. I'm staying in a hotel. My dad's yeah. in prison. My grandma just died. My pet just got run over. I mean, those types of things are real and are happening every single day. And going back to what you said, you don't have to say it's a safe place or not say it's a safe place. Our actions, our mannerisms, that that warmth that we uh, exude or don't exude <laughs> will mm -hmm. say it for us. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a lot, obviously, we can observe through nonverbal cues that the kids would be giving us, but honoring those, stopping and, you know, mm -hmm. bending down and saying, hey, you doing okay? Do you want to, you know, even I remember, oh my goodness, I just, I have a good story. Yay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Fifth grade. Um, you know, you got crushes. <laughs> you, you, you in fifth grade? Yes. All right. <laughs> um, one of the boys in class, um, my teacher knew I had a crush on him and she actually let us sit right next to each other. So... Love my Mrs. Vic. She was awesome. Um, so basically what happened is it's Christmas time. Everyone's exchanging cards and whatnot, little gifts. Uh, one of my best friends gave me a diary. So I was writing in the diary. And of course, I'm writing some thing about <laughs> him next to me, right? And so the um, one of the boys grabbed my diary uh -oh. and read it out loud in class. I was mortified, um, but the, the, the best thing that could have happened is, and not the whole, the, the entire class did not hear, but everyone around there and him, you know, heard it, but my teacher zoned in and she said, Crystal, do you want to go to the restroom right now? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I do. Right. She allowed me to escape the classroom and that moment to gather myself before I came in and who knows, you know, maybe she said something while I was gone. I have no idea. I should call him and see <laughs> if she said something to him. Um, but you know, that was a huge moment for me. I remember it vividly that I needed that escape. She gave it to me. Oh man. Thank you. Mrs. Vic. Just, just she was aware. She, she was had, aware. She a radar out and she gave you an opportunity. I mean, I've had, yeah, you have times like that where you see somebody tearing Struggling, up. Right? So. Yeah, they're tearing up over whatever it is. It's like, mm -hmm. you the restroom. You want to go wash your face? You want to go take a break? You want to go? And and more often than not, they'll be like, yes, please. It's like you're giving them that that opportunity. That's, that's awesome. Yep. And that's what a great thing. This is fifth grade. I mean how many years ago but that's what you remember you're not you're not you didn't just tell me what she taught you in math or reading or social studies you remember how she made you feel because she honored how you were feeling in that unfortunate circumstance where the kid took the diary as we as we kind of move toward the end of the episode let's let's focus a little bit on adults like because again we can't we can't neglect ourselves. I think this is becoming so much more in focus, which is a good thing. Yes. What have you found in terms of finding that balance for you, for yourself, uh, balancing family and career and all that stuff? What have you found that helps you? Um, you know, it's I've gone through phases and I just keep learning more and more. And so I kind of add to my toolbox as I go. 
Um, it's, it's very personal, you know, we always talk about professional development in education and really this shift toward wellness is a lot of personal development mm -hmm. and <clears throat> whether that's, you know, whether we're creating the space at schools to allow for more of that or just encouraging that to happen outside as well. Uh, I think that's the key and then supporting those practices, those wellness practices. So something, you know, I've, I've had to make adjustments, you know, being in the classroom, uh, it was great when I was there and I had my, uh, my team, we actually started exercising at school. Um, we had gone through the insanity program and got in such great shape. I mean, every single day. And it started out with just two or three of us. And before you knew it, there was six or seven and people from the schools. Um, we were a charter that had school, a, a lot of schools in a very small area. Um, they would come, they would come and work out with us. So just that environment, I mean, literally put it on, you know, the screen. Um, <clears throat> and we just worked out, moved the tables and did it. That was huge, huge, huge. I mean, as we know, right, there's, <laughs> we have to take care of our bodies. Mm -hmm. um, and whether that's what you're putting in it or what you're doing with it, right? We have to honor our bodies in a big way to achieve that wellness. So, so I've gone on a, on a huge journey um, with my wellness. I mean, I have a toxin-free home as much as possible, um, all cleaners and, and all of that. Um, I eat pretty much a paleo diet due to some allergies in the house. So that helped out, <laughs> um, but I haven't drank a soda in over 16 years. Wow. So, you know, things like that, um, have really helped with my physical wellness. But the thing is, is I, I I'm in a slump right now. I had gotten rid of some shoes. I just posted I'd gotten rid of some shoes when I was trying to declutter my house and I didn't have running shoes. I didn't have any shoes to really exercise in. And I just made the commitment. Like, you know, it's been my excuse. Oh, I don't have any shoes. Oh, but I don't have any shoes. <laughs> I just went and bought a pair of good walking shoes and a good running and good running shoes. So it's just little things like that, that we deprive ourselves of. And once you have that intent, you make the commitment and like, I'm, I'm dressed and ready to go on my walk. The boys are going to ride their bikes and I'm going to walk. Um, we'll go as far as our legs will take us. Um, and so that's that's one commitment that I made um, was just to honor my body every day. And sometimes that's just stretching in bed before I get up because that's all I can do. So that has been a big thing. So I kind of like the, the trio body, mind, and soul. Um, so I like to also fill my mind with something that is going to be positive. You know what, um, how many times have you seen that meme with the, the empty coffee cup, right? And it says, you know, fill your cup. Well, what are you filling your cup with? Mm -hmm. I just had this conversation um, with another teacher and, you know, she realized, oh, I'm watching these shows that are predominantly negative. They're about addiction and, and things that are not so positive and uplifting. They, they're not the, um, you know, the the happy ending and and we really need to think about what are we filling our mind with what are we listening to when we're relaxing what are we watching what are we doing what are we listening to so um i really am very um focused on what i am allowing and aware really aware of of what i'm allowing to fill my cup um and in regards to my mind right so good podcasts and books and getting that 10 minutes in 10 minutes is my daily commitment Sometimes I get to read more, um, but 10 minutes. And this is all done upon waking up because that starts off your day. So that has been a huge routine. Um, check out The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. That is kind of what helped me to bring all of these great practices into the morning. Um, that was huge for me. I was doing them, but the impact that it made just waking up that way was amazing. And then, um, you know, something for your soul. What are you doing for your spirit? Um, whether that's reading something um, that fills you up there or just connecting, right? I meditate a lot um, as often as I can. As long as I wake up before the kids, it's usually <laughs> effective. <laughs> um, and so that balance has has been the best for me. I would say sticking to those three, making sure they're happening. And yes, sometimes 
I have to wait until the evening to do them um, or to catch up. And it doesn't have to be, you know, don't, don't kick yourself. If it's not happening every morning, as long as it's happening and you have that intention, you, intention and you know, you're getting it that at the end of the week adds up to so much. And you've filled your cup with some seriously good personal development. I love that. I love that idea of, because yeah, you're right. We see you can't fill from an empty vessel, but what a great, what a great point to say, Oh yeah. What are you filling it with? Garbage in garbage out. Like you said, if I'm watching all these, negative things on tv well that's what i'm filling my cup with and that's what's going to spill over and and i totally agree about the morning it's difficult sometimes but uh when i will start off my morning with with a devotional or and praying mm-hmm. for me that's what i do for my soul it, it's it starts the day like exactly like you said it's starting it off on the right foot now there's nothing wrong with doing that at night too, because yeah. really it doesn't matter when I. But but being intentional, you use that word intentional. That you you've got your three things that you're intentional about. If we are intentional about it, then it becomes a habit and it becomes part of what we do, and we benefit from that. Um, I love that. I love that. For me, like I said, like in terms of trying to start that morning off and and. And things have been so crazy. I haven't always been good with that starting in the morning, but I'm trying to get back into that because you're right. It does make a difference for me too. uh, And this was one of the things in that Twitter chat that we talked about. One of the things for me for that balance is turning off notifications. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. For my topic. Yeah, it it, it is. It's, and as a site principal, uh, I have been told from people, it's like, what? How do you do that? Uh, and I'm telling you because when I became this, I just finished year six as a site principal. And for the first, I would say probably three years, that darn little red number on the email icon on the iPad controlled me. Yep. It, it, it just being straight, it's like, and every time that number got bigger, it would be like, oh my gosh, there, I've got 15 things that are requiring my attention right now. And coming to the point where I turned that off was incredibly freeing. Now, I still check my email a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I have to because it will back up if I don't. But the difference is now I do it on my time. Mm-hmm. I don't let that little number control me. I do it when I want to do it. And if I'm watching a movie with the family, I'll, I'm not checking email right then and I'll check it later. And I don't have a little bing or anything like that telling me that I have a message. I've got an Apple watch. I don't have work email coming to my watch because I don't want that on my, uh, if it's a true emergency, someone's going to text me or they're going to call me. And that's what I've told my staff. Um, So for anybody listening, who's a site administrator, it can be done. (laughs) I'm still in the loop. I'm still getting my emails and I'll tell anyone. It's not a confession. It's just letting people know. I did not have on my phone work email until a year ago. If you can, (laughs) if if you can, and, and the only reason, and I'll tell you the reason I put it on was we had wildfires in our area. Oh yeah. about, About a year ago. And I mean, like, so close to the school where you could see the flames. Wow. Uh, where parents were coming to get their kids and we had to uh, send yeah. kids home. And I realized at that point, as the district was trying to get information out, there were some phone calls and stuff taking place too, but they were also sending stuff out via email. And yeah. I realized at that point, I need to have it on here for those emergency type thing. But once again, there's no notifications mm-hmm. uh, because it, w- it it'll control me if I let it. And I made that decision that I'm not going to let it because I remember in my second or third year of teaching coming to that realization, I'll never get it all done. I don't know yeah. if, if, when, when you, uh, I mean, I, I vividly remember sitting in my copy in the copy room in the office at the first school I worked at, making copies, standing in front of the copy machine, looking to my right at the wooden 
cabinets. And it was one of those epiphany moments. <laughs> like I was, I was mentally going through, and it was like 7 p.m. I was still at work. And I remember going through all the things that I still had to do. And it, it was just, it, it hit me like I could stay. I remember literally thinking this, I could stay till midnight. Oh, yeah. Every night. And I will still not get it all done. And coming to that realization and now as admin, I've really embraced that because it'll keep. Now, there's some things it has to be done right now. But other things, it'll keep. It'll keep because I could stay here till 10 o'clock every night. There's always something else to do. I will never get it all done. And kind of like the notifications thing, I have to be intentional about not letting the job control me. I'm trying to take the bull by the horns and do the best that I can. There's going to be times when things go crazy and the job is going to control me. But being intentional about doing what I can to not let it uh, overtake me. So anyway, that's my little soapbox for anyone listening who's thinking of trying to turn notifications off in terms of your social emotional well-being i would highly recommend it again doesn't mean you can't check your email it just means check it on your time so yeah that's great um something that i did oh i think it was at the beginning of this year 2019 was called mindset reset with mel robbins that program is still available you can literally you know hashtag it and find her resources um and it was for 35 days i believe it was she did a session um if anyone wants to start their own personal development uh around this towards wellness check that out that was phenomenal has a little workbook. Um, it's a daily dose of, of some good reality about that. You know, sh she started off with put your phone, <laughs> charge it in another room, stop mm -hmm. waking up and looking straight at your phone, the notifications, all of that. So freeing yourself and, and you said it, you know, you check it on your time, um, taking control of the things that you can control and that perspective around that is hugely freeing. So, I set the expectations like you did with your staff. They know how to contact you. Uh, I work from home, which was a whole other um, adventure of trying to figure out the wellness here because I have my six and four year old here with me while I'm trying to get work done and teach. Um, so they need me 24 seven, but I need to get my work done as well. Uh, so it's been a balance, but I, I set those expectations with parents. I will check my emails first thing in the morning around lunch and at the end of the day before the end of the day and if you need me call me directly if it is an emergency mm -hmm. um you know there's a lot of tech involved <laughs> with um my schooling so you know um they they know that and and then my kids know right they they have gotten used to when I'm teaching or when you see this on they, they know that so just setting expectations and boundaries that is so huge so giving um permission to yourself but a lot of times um that permission comes also from others you need to hear it and one of the things that came to mind when you were talking about the um you know you could be there all night our principal even though our um, cleaning crew was there later in the evening she did not allow us to be there past a certain hour she said no you guys cannot be here past this hour period um and you know, all of us wanted to stay. We wanted that copy machine. We wanted access. We knew it was there, and we know we wouldn't be fighting over it. Um, and so, I wonder what it would be like now with everything so digital. <laughs> but you know, it, it was it was nice to know that she wanted us to go, and and then we were enabled. She really empowered us to set to start setting our own boundaries. Um, you know, something that I've I've heard recently as well is, you know, even just that culture within the school of, I remember a good friend of mine who would go to concerts every once in a while and she'd leave like right as the door 
you know, right as the bell rang and she's off to a concert. She missed a kind of important day at school. Um, and we were judging, you know, we were like, gosh, why does she get to do this? Oh my gosh. I can't believe, oh, she's principal's favorite. No, she had boundaries. I appreciate it so much more now. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, wow, I wish I would have just said the same thing sometimes and gone, but she was taking care of herself. Um, she was, further advanced in her wellness than I was at that point. So, um, but, but it was great, you know, and, and when we do that and, and reserve our judgment um, and point those things out, our principal finally had to, because she, she saw us getting upset and she, I remember her defending that. And that was amazing. Cause at that point, all of us went, Oh, we can, we can do that too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty much when she instituted the, you can't stay here after this hour policy. So it was pretty awesome. No, I, I, again, now as a site principal, I, I very much relate to what you just said about the encouraging people to go home. One of the first things when I came into this position was like, guys, you've got a life, you have family and family is more important. I, I don't want you, you don't have to be here till seven o'clock every night. I don't want you here at yeah. seven o'clock every night. At the same time, I also recognize that there are those times when, because I was that teacher, there mm -hmm. were some of those days where, you know what, I'm going to stay a little later to bang this out, to get this ready so that mm -hmm. when I go home, yeah. It's completely, I can, I can, I am literally, everything is ready to go for Monday morning. Sometimes I would stay till seven o'clock on a Friday. Oh yeah. Be, because I wanted when I left to know I'm ready. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to have to do work at home. So I totally encourage them at the same time. And for anyone listening who is in a similar position, Recognize, too, there are those people who, if you force them to go home, you may actually be creating more stress. Does that yeah. make sense? Because oh, I, was yeah. that, I was that teacher who, I know you want me to go home, and I totally appreciate, and I, and I want to do that. Like, do not feel like you have to be here. You, you don't have to impress me by staying till 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. but I get. Because sometimes I'll be like, yeah, I'm almost done. I'll say, like, I get it. Don't stay yeah. too late, though. I don't. I don't want you here late. But I understand <laughs> that right now you may have to mentally check this off your list so that when you get home you can enjoy that Netflix binge yeah. session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because exactly. otherwise, otherwise, you're those things are still swirling around in your head. So. Yeah, I think that's the other thing is you know, um, success is planned, mm -hmm. and if it's success for your wellness. You kind of do have to plan it. And I'm definitely that person as well where, yeah, Friday nights was crazy traffic anyways. So I just said, wow, if I could get the weekend free, yep. um, yeah. that that would be amazing. Uh, which is another thing, you know, I feel like the productivity training that I've done for myself and the adjustments that I've made in that space, especially once I was working from home, um, that really helped my wellness. And I think that a lot of times, you know, I, I remember uh, we just recently did just a basic Google email training uh, and some other Google hacks that saved people so much time. They were like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And, you know, and not all of us are as techie as others and knowing all these secret, you know, three whenever you see three lines or three dots, right? Click on it. Cause there might be something or the extensions and all of that. Like we, if we could have a little bit of time spent on that um, productivity training, right? That could ease up so much time for people. I'm um, working smarter, not harder. Right. Um, but, but really paying attention to that. And I think that's a big piece of wellness as well within the teaching profession, right? Is like, let's talk about that and how, how are we planning? Um, and, and what routines are happening in the classroom that can alleviate, right? That pack an impact, but are also not heavy workload for you. Um, so I love edgy protocols. Amazing, right? Mm -hmm. give, the, give the work to the students. Um, and so there's just little things you can tweak with, within that 
but really planning is a big piece that can relieve stress. So at night, something that I do is every night, if possible, I am putting to, to bed, right? What's happening tomorrow. I already know. So I look in my planner, I do 10 to 15 minutes of, um, really looking at my time management for the next day and what's happening uh, on Sunday nights. I do a big probably hour planning for the week, making sure everybody knows what's happening in the family, right? For, for the upcoming week. So whether that's posting a calendar up in your kitchen, um, things like that, but taking the hour on Sundays, we have Sunday family dinners and whatnot. And when everyone's kind of just chilling, I, I escape <laughs> and do my hour that that's been really helpful. Um, and so, you know, the night before what's coming, you don't wake up in such a big, um, you know, stress because, oh, what's, what's going on, you know, and you've kind of put it to bed. So that, that was another practice that I started that was really impactful. Awesome. 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 Well, Crystal, again, I say this, gosh, I feel like I say this at every end of every episode. If nobody else is listening. That's okay, because I got something out of this. Though I, I, I do think there are there, there are some people listening, and I'm sure that they got something out of this as well. Thank you for sharing your stories, your 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 what has worked for you, because I think that's going to work for other people as well. Um, for anyone who wants to connect with you online, uh, learn from you further, how can they do that? Uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter, and I just kind of put a little more effort into my Instagram. Um, you can find me. Uh, two places, I would say at Miss Viegas 11 is kind of my main Twitter account, but I just started something called the Teacher Love Tribe. And so you can find me and more information on Instagram and on Twitter at T-C-H-R Love Coach. Uh, and there, what I'm doing weekly, every Thursday um, at five o'clock Pacific time right now, is I'm kind of helping to create the community where we can start some of these practices together. So I'm giving, I give a lot of tips today, um, which I have been giving in tiny little tidbits. So it's just 30 minutes and it's really another big piece of um, the puzzle is accountability and community with that. So I have a friend who I um, do Marco Polo with almost every single day and we set our intentions. So everything that I have in my plan book, kind of, um, we kind of go down the list. This is what I'm doing today. I'm going to exercise and win at this. It's so funny because, um, that alone has been huge. She'll, she'll send me a message, do 20 jumping jacks, <laughs> you know, cause she knows I'm trying to exercise more and I'll do it. Um, and so I really want to create that community with the teacher love tribe, um, teach a little bit, get a little Zen together, do some, guided meditation, some breathing work and whatnot, uh, and then just share together and maybe connect some some educators together to be those accountability partners. So very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I just, I just pulled that up. With, just pull that up on Twitter. So uh, and don't forget, there's the ditch summit at the end of the summer. Uh, I believe it's q.org uh, slash ditch summit. And that's on teacher wellness. Mm -hmm. And so you're a speaker. Yes, I was asked to do that. So that's going to be really fun. Um, I'll be talking with Matt Miller in a couple of weeks to record that. <laughs> Very cool. I'm, I'm uh, working with Matt to have him a guest on, on this podcast as well. Oh, awesome. So Perfect. Trying to, trying to get that done too. So, well, Crystal, again, thank you for, for, for taking the time. Uh, those of you listening, thank you for taking the time to listen. Hope you got something out of this. As always, if you have not already done so, Remember, you can subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, we're on Spotify, and now we are in Stitcher as well. If you listen to your podcast via Stitcher, you can find Teaching Tales there as well. Once again, thank you so much, Crystal. Thanks for listening, everyone. And until next time, have a good one. <laughs>